These are exciting times for FreeBSD, what with new releases, new projects and new contributors, not to mention new magazines, this video zine. Although this video zine doesn't have perhaps the big brains behind it as the FreeBSD journal has, nor the budget, we do have something in common, the love for FreeBSD, and as such we will aim to bring you news, reviews and how-tos that may have passed you by. Created with love, designed with passion, and presented with pride. I hope this video zine will provide everyone with something they like. In this issue, we look to how you can add an extra hard drive to FreeBSD, six puzzle games to keep you busy, and how to get cool animated wallpapers. We'll begin this by unboxing this nice little caddy. Uh, it takes two two and a half inch drives and uh, that slot uh, in the top and the bottom and in itself it slots into the where the disk drive used to be if you had a disk drive um, okay so what we get inside is instructions uh, black and white nothing fancy and just gives you the basic uh, outline of it two drives two inch uh, trailer hot spot mobile rack backplane and there's the picture nice and nice and you get two well I kind of they, they like protective stickers that go on the back of the uh, the hard drives which uh, I'll use on on them and for the thing itself uh, it's nice and weighty made out of metal and uh, yeah two buttons there that you press to uh, unlock the doors that swing open and two LEDs on the other side very nice. Yeah, okay, that's good. We'll see what else we've got in there. If I can get it open. Right, but wires, of course. They've got the connector cables, some SATA, two uh, Molex, I think, by the looks of that. Uh, two of them, and a multi one there. Interesting. Two SATA cables. Because you never have enough cables. And a little bag of screws. Okay, that's nice. And this is the machine itself that we're going to be fixing it on. Uh, oh, a damaged USB 3 there. I'll have to fix that later. Uh, FreeBSD stickers. I thought I've got a Blu-ray. DVD writer. Another tray uh, for three and a half inch, uh, well, five and a quarter inch drives. A uh, SD card reader. And the empty slot there, which uh, we're going to be using. Very nice. So here it is, all wired up. Uh, it looks kind of like messy, but uh, that's where the Molex uh, power goes in, and it feeds onto the drives itself, and then onto the LEDs. And it goes in there. Fixing these are always the best part. And I'll do the other side in a minute. Right, here we are. It's all fixed in. All nice and neat. That's the entirety of the front taken up now, which is uh, quite nice. Little doors there, look. Uh, I'm going to put some of the spare drives I found. I'll put them in the top. Ah, yeah. It's a little... You have to... Uh, have to position it right, all it will close. 
Oh. There you go. And we'll put the bottom one in. And it's tough little... Right, there you go. Very nice. Press the button, springs open. Press the button, springs open. Very nice and neat. Actually, I changed my mind on one of the drives. I want to use one as a scratch drive, so I'm just going to put it into the bottom one instead of the uh, the uh, hard drive that I put in. And this one won't be taken out. Okay, this is the uh, setup that I have at the moment. I've got ADA1, ADA2, and ADA3. And what I want to do is label the new ones uh, 4 and 5. So if we look at the D message, and there's ADA4 and ADA5 of the two drives I put in. The ADA4 being the uh, Kingston SSD. And if I can find it, the bottom one is the Atachi, the uh, spinning one. Hmm. The speed is not fantastic, 150, but then it's just a backup drive. In the top one is going to be the uh, scratch, di scratch disk. Right, using DUAS, because some people have been commenting that I shouldn't actually uh, be using SU, I'm going to use SAID, or SADI. This is a BSD config partition editor. I could use the command line, of course, um, but I'm going to use this one. Right, I'm just going to delete the stuff that was on the drives as it was. I don't need to use them. And I do create... First is going to be on the SSD. Just going to change the GPT first, actually. Change it from MBR to uh, GPT. Okay. Now we can create. Right, I'm just going to enable trim. And mount point. I'm going to... Um, I want to put it on M mount and call it Scratch, I think. That's a good enough name. So I don't forget which one it is. That'll do. And for the backup drive, which is a spinning metal one, um, I'm just going to go down to and call it uh, MNT or mount backup. Highly original names, but it helps me remember which is which. And that's it. And press finish. Commit. And all done. Just let it do its magic. There you go. I know I could have used the command line to do it using gpart, etc. But um, I've never really used this one for uh, partitioning before, and we'll see how it works. Right, so I'm just going to create some uh, mounts to this, so... Okay. And we'll do one for uh, the backup. Okie dokie. And, okay, let's have a look at the uh, FS tab. Oh, file system table, in case you want to know what it was. And, oh, look at that, at the bottom, it's already done for you, which is nice. Yeah, that's very nice, actually. So rather than having to put them in manually, uh, that said, or said he, actually did it for me. Very nice. I just like to put these little hashes in to uh, divide the area up so I know which bits I've just added. Save that. Clear. And we're just going to mount the file system. Mount A. We'll uh, mount everything. Or mount all. And bada boom. There it is at the bottom. So we've got the scratch and backup mounted. Painless. Very nice indeed.
six puzzle games to play. First up is Free Blocks by Justin Jacobs. You can install it using PKG install free blocks or portmaster games forward slash free blocks. Free blocks is a puzzle game with similar gameplay to Tetris Attack. So if you know how to play that, I think you can jump straight into this with no problem. Using the cursor keys, you try and match the squares together until you're clear with three, the row there. It's actually more, more tricky than you think. Simple gameplay, but very addictive, with the added difficulty of getting it done before it reaches the top. Next is Hexahop by Tom Beaumont. Exahop is a hexagonal tile-based puzzle game with one simple goal, destroy all the green tiles. So you do get vibes of Qbert, but it's uh, very different in gameplay. You control via the keyboard or mouse, and you can install easily using PKG install Exahop or Portmaster Games forward slash Exahop. There are infinite undos and no time limits, and the challenge is to find all the ways to complete the puzzle. Infant undoes is something that you definitely will use. Next is Bombs by Tony Horton. Bombs is a simple 2D puzzle game. The objective is to blow up all the bombs on each level, then escape off the edge of the screen. So again, it gives you vibes of Bomberman with, if you've ever played the 8-bit game Repton. Kind of. You can easily install using PKG install bombs or portmaster games forward slash bombs. Don't forget it's a Z on the end, not an S. Next is Uralam by Alan Wachowski. And as you can see, it's a very flashy looking game. It's a platform game in which the player moves a ball through a 3D terrain. You move the ball towards the lights in the horizon until they can be absorbed. It gives you a rough idea where you need to aim to. And as you can see, the light in the distance gets larger when you get closer. Later levels are far more complicated than this, and this was difficult enough as it was. As you can see, there's ones involving boxes where you jump across. And although it seems very simple, it's a quite absorbing game, if you mind the pun. And you can install using PKG, install Erlam or Portmaster Games forward slash Erlam. Next is Palapoli by Stefan Majewski. And you can install with PKG, install Palapoli or Portmaster Games forward slash Palapoli. And as you can see, it's a jigsaw puzzle using any picture you can find. This jigsaw allows free movement of pieces and saves all progress immediately, which is really handy. And you can toggle the preview window on or off as you need. And as you can see, you can use a self-defined picture. So if you go to a picture that you've stored, click on it and it will become your puzzle, which is pretty cool. You can customize the game to suit your taste. backgrounds, anything that helps you really, which uh, I think in my case I'd need to. So it's quite a different, uh, yeah, that's about one to see actually. And lots of other toggleable options. Right, first, a quick look at my complete desktop. It's very nice. It is, of course, Motive Window Manager, and as you can see, I can access full desktop menus. 
Move the animation running in the background. Application start normally and can be moved as normal. Well, as normal as you can in Motif Window Manager. Any choppy movement is down to simple screen recorder and it's capturing. Uh, it was smooth in real life. All while the moving wallpaper is doing its thing in the background, you can open, move around, and use various applications. Isn't free and open source software great? We'll have a look at some of the wallpapers I use. I like this one. This is like Tropical Island. Uh, this is very psychedelic. And of course, I've got the Mesa dem demo going in the uh, bottom of the screen. This one, yeah, I like this one. This is very good. You can, of course, use any GIF or movie file that you want. And coming up next is how to install and get started. You need to pause if you want to write something down. I'll leave a copy of the instructions in the description box down below. Please be aware that this may not work on full desktop environments such as KDE, Plasma or Mate, GNOME, etc. I tested it on Motive Window Manager, Joe's Window Manager, and i3 and other light window managers, and it worked brilliantly. And this is just a bit of fun, but it's something that I use all the time. Up next, just a little clip of me using it with Compton. So if you want fancy see-through windows, I'm just going to start Compton. There we go, look, nice see-through windows, if you want to use it, of course. I received some messages regarding the test version of FreeBSD user, the, the FreeBSD video zine, and the vast majority, 99%, was in favour, was very supportive. And here are a few of the comments. I can't put them all because there was quite a few, but some of them uh, I can do. I had one from Gordon. He says, I kind of like it. So do I, Gordon. It's very nice. SJ wrote, great idea. And I have to agree with that, SJ. Ice B, Ice B says, yay, do another one. You choose good topics. Well, thank you, Ice B. I actually do like to think so. Madeline wrote, hell yeah. And uh, I can't disagree with that. Antonio wrote, very professional first video magazine. Of course, this is a viable idea. Waiting for the next one. Well, thank you, Antonio. That's really kind of you. If you've got any comments regarding this, or there's anything that you want to pull apart, or anything you want to recommend, or anything you want to contribute, then please leave a message under the video. And I'll try to include that, if you want me to, in the next edition. So if you're rude, I'll probably put that in as well. Remember, FreeBSD user is published four times a year. Spring, summer, autumn, and winter. It's free, it's available to anybody with a browser and internet connection, and it's for the FreeBSD community.